you also incorporate an element of eye fixation and you have them stare into your eyes. You essentially use Dracula's induction. You know, you mentioned that earlier, and I, I suppose my first introduction to uh, hypnosis was watching Bela Lugosi. Go, sure. Look, look into my eyes. Look deep but, into uh, my eyes. The eye fixation, as you know, in any hypnotic induction is, is not essential, but it's important. But it's something, it's a, it's a focus. But it also, as, as I mentioned earlier in doing it, it also, with a little bit of timing, gives credibility to the fact that it's working. As you, as you know, any hypnotic in induction uh, is a lot of placebo belief that it's actually happening. So if I have them looking, if, when I'm saying looking into my eyes, what they're actually looking into are the spotlights behind me. And then as soon as I see the first eye start to, start to tear, I say, you'll notice your eyes begin, in a moment you'll notice your eyes will in fact begin to tear and tire. Well, first off, their eyes are looking up. You don't want them looking down, because it's a very restful position. You want the eyes to tire and the eyelids become, to become heavy. So they're looking up at you. They're also looking into the lights, which will cause the eyes to begin to tear and tire. And as soon as, 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 soon as you say that it's going to happen, it starts happening. It's a matter, again, a matter of timing and having the lights positioned right. Then when you say, close your eyes, this will make you feel better. What happens, they close their eyes, Sure enough, it does make you feel better. Sure, and you do that twice. You actually told when you told them to close their eyes, and when you told them to drop your head, uh, drop their head. You said both times, "This will help make you feel better." People like to feel good, mm -hmm. and you keep the you keep stressing over and over. This too will make you feel better. Uh, you're feeling good this, this entire time. The whole show is a pleasurable experience, and that's what you're trying to get across. One of the thing uh, in the live show, you couldn't see it here, possibly in the live show, you'll, you'll see it happening. Even with our eyes closed, when I say five deep asleep, you'll notice the lights go to almost a blackout. Right. I want the audience to still be able to see. I have it go to a, to a blue. But if they're almost under, but not quite there, even with their eyes closed, they're aware of the bright light still shining. When I say five, the pop, deep asleep, and all the lights go out, you're aware of a sudden darkness or curtain falling. If you're almost under, but not quite, that will push you over the edge. All of a sudden, when I say sleep, deep asleep, you feel everything get dark, you're out. Now you have the luxury here in Las Vegas in your showroom, which is a fantastic showroom. So if you're ever in Las Vegas, come see the show. Please. Uh, right, but um, uh, sometimes you work on the road in various situations where you might not be in control or have the desirable lighting. Uh, can you still do this same thing? Absolutely. Okay. I worked I worked at a gymnasium once where the sound system they gave me was a Mr. Microphone and they had two uh, bedside table lamps taped to volleyball poles. So I did, and so I had the coach and the assistant coach stand by the lamps and when I said five deep asleep they flipped the little switch right. and the lights went up. It's the effect. Kind of like our setup here. Yeah, kind of right. like, yeah. <laughs> but the, the effect it, you do it one time and it's remarkable. You know, you don't you don't want the lights to go out because people in the audience want to say, oh, you must be slipping them a twenty right. dollar bill. You want the audience to be able to see, but you want them to have the illusion of the curtain falling. Sure. When that happens, then all of a sudden, without that, you might get. Uh, say I have ten people on stage. Without the light blackout, I might get four of them. Like, with the light blackout, I'm going to get eight or nine of them. Sure. So the lighting does make a big difference, difference. to your uh, efficacy. Well, let's talk about a little bit about visual imagery. Uh, you have them create an image in their mind, the, the puffy white cloud, the clear blue sky. Uh, do you ever find that folks have a difficult time with the mental imagery, or is that something they really enjoy doing? They enjoy doing it. It also gives me an indication of where they are, because I, that's the, one of the few times, you'll notice in the induction, as soon as, I had their, as soon as their eyes were closed, I turned around so that I could see, monitor the audience. Uh, I never wanted them to see me with my back to them, except when I told them it was going to happen. But as soon as their eyes were closed, I turned around and I was watching the audience. And the only when I turned back around to look at them was when I was giving visual imagery, because I wanted to see if the eyelids were fluttering. Sure. And if I'm getting the rapid eye movement, then this is this is a person's going to be a good subject. So that's the reason for the visual imagery. If they're actually visualizing and they're able to see it, those eyelids are starting to flutter, and they're going to be great. So that's just another indication of, of who I'm going to keep on stage. Sure. You also use language patterns that 
maybe even follow a little bit of the Ericksonian tradition to some extent. Uh, uh, you know, certainly don't do an Ericksonian type of induction, but uh, drift down, sink down. You're very descriptive in your adjectives. Use descriptors that create not only a mental image uh, or a visual image in their mind, but also a physiological response of drifting down. Um, do you do that intentionally? I've always done it, so it must be intentional. Sure. Okay. Sure. <laughs> uh, Actually, I, I think the reason, the, the first hypnotist that I ever saw perform was a gentleman by the name of Jack Berry. And Jack used uh, sinking deeper and deeper, and, and, and I, I just liked the way that, I liked the way that it sounded. I've always, and then later on when I was teaching it, uh, I would talk more about it, but uh, I liked it because I liked the way it sounded when Jack did it. Sure. Uh, well, that's great. Thanks for sharing uh, those ideas with us. Uh, in a minute, we're going to spend a little more time and talk about the ending of the induction. Absolutely.